in the fourth episode of my Waterhouse project, I'll be taking you through the exact node setup for how I do glass in Blender. So let's jump into it. So I've got this node set up here from a previous project and I'm basically just going to be reproducing it in this Blender scene. Normally, I literally just copy materials from projects and paste them in into my new projects because I don't really change it once it works. But I just want to walk you through how I do it from scratch. So this is the glass one. So what I'm going to do is just create a plane here instead of a cube. So if I go me um, mesh, plane, um, rotate 90, rotate Z axis 90. And then I'm just going to chuck this in here because we're going to do the the key window first. This is kind of like the primary one. And then I'm just going to chuck it up here, move it in, um, in a little bit. It's actually quite a big gap. Um, I, think, I think I'll do it just here for now. And then we're just going to make sure that this is nice and kind of in in there, if that makes sense. So we need to make sure it's on the right axis. Hopefully we can snap to a point. But um, it doesn't really... Like, I don't mind things kind of going into each other. As long as they're not on the same plane, it doesn't really matter because you don't really see it. So my modeling is kind of lazy, but, you know, you just got to focus on the important things if you're trying to do something um, quickly. Cool, and I just want to check what this is. So this is the flooring. What I'm going to do is bring the flooring up to here. And then I'm just going to delete the underneath. And we'll actually, I'm just going to move that slightly lower. Because I actually noticed in the previous one, I was showing off the geometry, but we had a plane just underneath. So now with the flooring generator that I was talking about in the previous episode, you can actually see there's literal 3D geometry that's created and I literally can just move it around and you don't have to mess around with UV maps or texturing and it's automatically variated. So you've got lightness and darkness and there's no tiling. There's a link, link in the description for that. Um, so I'm just going to go in back in the camera view. Now we've just got a plane at the moment, but what's really important is we're going to add a bit of solidity. So we're going to create a solidify modifier. A solid <laughs> solidify modifier. Um, and we're going to just do, so what's that? That's, um, I think that's 10 mil. Uh, I think... Let's do 19 mil. Yeah. So we want to do double glazing. And I think it's fine just to do one plane. But this shader setup that I've got here won't really work as well if it's just like a thin plane because that's not actually real geometry. And we are going with, um, you know, physical real shaders. PBR. So if I click on this plane and I'm going to change this from material to glazing, but I'll actually I'll just call it glass. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this principled BSDF and we're going to keep the material output. So I've got this little setup here. We want a mix shader. So I'm going to go shift a mix shader. And if I plug this into the surface, now we want a glass BSDF. And we're going to plug that into the first shader, which is a green one. And this IOR is the index of refraction. And so this is kind of just when the light hits the glass, it's actually going through at the right angle. But you don't need to know that. That's kind of advanced. Um, we just want to make sure that that is what it should be on automatically which is 1.450 if it's water it'll be 1.333 but we'll get through get to that on another episode so we want a transparent bsdf not translucent you want transparent cool shader into there 
and we want up here a math node. And we want to change this to maximum over here in comparison. We want to plug that into the factor of the mix shader. And if this is like really complicated, um, just like don't worry about it. Just literally copy exactly what I do and you should get a really good result. You don't need to understand it necessarily right now. That will come with time. So we want a light path and that's the last one here. So we're going to type in light path. And we want is shadow ray to go into the first value of the maximum and is reflection ray to go into the second value. And we want that. Um, that's pretty much it. So if we go out of this real quick, we can see what we've just done. So if I go into cycles view. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. Um, and so the reason why I've done this really intense node setup instead of just, um, you know, doing a glass shader is because the normal glass shader doesn't actually allow good light to actually penetrate through the glass and to come out the other side. There are actually a few issues with the glass shader. So over time, you know, I've just started to use this node setup and it, I've just found that it just kind of optimizes the quality of the light that passes through and it's just a little bit more photorealistic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go out of this viewport shader and I'm just going to copy this because we don't have to worry about um, UV mapping. I'm literally just going to copy this and I'm going to chuck it in here, snap it, rotate it 90 degrees and let's just put it over here. Make sure that it's in a little bit. We can refine this later. In fact, we definitely will. But just to get an indication of what the glass will look like on another angle, we're going to do this. So let's just move this down. Cool. And we want it to be on the other side as well because this is going to be like a bridge. Uh, let's just move this out a little bit. Perfect. Great. What I want here is some mullions. So mullions are what you see on windows, the vertical pieces of um, steel or aluminium, and they are like the window frame. And so if you have a piece of glass that's too, too wide, then you need good structure there to hold the pieces together. So I'm just going to put these here for now. And a little trick I do is I create one, um, one million and I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a array modifier and then I'm going to go on the X axes and I'm just going to make, I like to do three. I like to do three. It's just kind of a nice rule of design to go with three if you can. And then that's just kind of literally created a perfect, well, relatively perfect array of um, mullions. And if I just duplicate this, I'll get rid of the array. And then I'm going to rotate this on the Y axis 90 degrees. We're going to move this down here now. And we want that to be like pretty, pretty low. And I actually want potentially I might change this. I might want that to be rebated a little bit. Cool. And we want to do the same thing for the top. But we actually want to move that in on the same plane this time. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material. We're going to call this anodized aluminium. Or you could just call it black metal or whatever you want. This is just like the window metal. This is like the window frame and it's going to be like a coated metal. It'll have like a black coat over it, like a paint. So we're going to go over here. Once we've got everything selected, so we want to select that too. And we want to go, we want to go anodized aluminium 
But when we click on all of these and then we change the material, it's just going to change it to the last one that we've selected, which is really annoying. So what we want to go do is go over here and go copy materials to selected. And that will have applied it to all of the ones that we've selected. Cool. So we've got these here. And what I'm going to do, these are kind of like the indicative pieces of um, frame, I guess you can call it. We are going to apply the same material because that's like the window frame. So let's go anodized aluminium, copy material to selected. And I just noticed this one here needs to come up. Perfect. And I'm, I don't even think we're going to see this, but it's just kind of those little details that affect the lighting and the colors of the scene. Even if you don't see it with the camera, that black albedo will actually bounce around a little bit. And it just kind of helps to perceive, see, it helps the viewer to perceive the scene better. So you can see it's a very, very subtle kind of change. Um, we've got this window here, we've got those ones there. And depending on the HDRI, these windows are going to look a bit different. But I thought it would be really beneficial just to get the um, kind of building blocks in there for now. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, I can always play around with maybe seeing a little bit more of the the frame in here because I think that will help perceive that it's a window. Um, but yeah, in the next episode, I'm going to be working on the texturing a little bit more. So if you want to check out my Instagram, it's at Oliver Higgins Architecture. You can see the kind of work I do as a professional. And you can also join my Discord. There's a link in the description. You can post your work, get feedback from me and the community. And it's just a great place to grow as a 3D artist. So I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.